What's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman. I know it has been a minute since I have made a video. It took a little bit of a break, a little bit longer than I would have liked it to be, but I am back today and today I got something exciting for y'all. I have a bunch of bags of soft plastics, but not just any soft plastics. We have some of the world's craziest looking soft plastics. I looked all over the web and I just looked for the craziest soft plastics I could find and I bought a bunch of them, so that is exactly what I have to fish with for y'all today. So let's go ahead and hop right into checking out all these soft plastics but make sure you wait around until the end the last bait I have is super super cool it's really unique and it's one of the craziest soft plastic baits I've ever seen I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and make an entire dedicated video to just that bait but let's go ahead and take a look at all the other baits First up, we have these crazy looking centipede baits. These things are absolutely insane. They just got all kinds of appendages on them. I'm actually gonna start out with this one. I thought it was a really cool bait and I think I can get munched on this pretty fast, but just worm-like, but with a lot of like centipede little appendages and things like that. Our next bait is some kind of Asian bait. It's uh, Rains, it's got uh, some Asian lettering on there. I'm not exactly sure what language that is, but these are a crazy looking bait themselves. And they're just like these little creature. They look kind of like isopods or some kind of like deep sea creature. So I'm excited to use those. They'll probably be very similar to a crawl. And these are just like another crawl bait, but I just thought they looked really different and unique from every other kind of crawl bait I see on the market. They almost got kind of like a futuristic tech looking vibe to them. They got all these crazy, really sharp edges. So that's kind of why I picked the soft plastic as one of the craziest ones I could find, just because it was so different from all the other crawls. And then finally, we have a worm right here. And this worm is not any kind of worm because it has like these like almost frog type feet on the back of it. It looks super weird. I haven't seen any other worm on the market that has appendages like that on the end. So I just thought it was really unique as far as worms go. But I have one more bait and that's the one I'm gonna show at the end. But let's go ahead and hop into these baits, check them out and see what they're all about. We're gonna start out with the crazy looking centipede crawl thing right here. Just have it rigged up Texas rig. Got a little 1 8 ounce bullet weight, a little bullet weight stopper. This should do the trick. The weather conditions today are absolutely phenomenal, guys. We have a full moon hopefully coming in tomorrow night. So it's close to full moon. Was that a bite? That might've been a bite on my first cast but the bite should be really, really, really good. The conditions are all lined up for a phenomenal bite today. While the conditions are absolutely incredible, it's probably not the most ideal situation for throwing soft plastics. I really should be throwing like top water or faster moving bait, like a medium diving crankbait or just something a little bit more active. So what I'm probably gonna do to compensate that is fish these soft plastics a little bit faster than I normally would. That should do the trick and I should get smoked by plenty of fish today. I'm not too worried about it. Overall, the bite's gonna be great, as I've already said four or five times. But the good news is that the topwater bite is going to be hot over the next few days. So I'm probably gonna get out and do some topwater fishing. I brought it with me today. I brought a little topwater action just in case I get really antsy. I wanna throw it across a nice little shallow flat. So you might see me pick that up at some point in the video but let's go ahead and move on to our next spot. Nothing in this little tiny bay. We're gonna find them though. We are going to find them. I have high hopes in that. Before I go any further, I really need to put some sunscreen on. The sun is coming out strong now. It's time to put on the sunscreen. Gotta stay strapped folks. All better, protected from the sun now. Let's get back in there. One thing I hate about sunscreen though is it makes my hands all slimy for my fishing reel. So let me wipe off some of the sunscreen off my hands. They're a little bit sticky. There we go, first fish of the day. Oh, off a little brush pile. Yes, sir, there we go. Starting the day off with just a little dude. Nothing too crazy. I'm sure we're gonna do a lot better than this today. Take a look at that nice little slimy green guy. Smoked that thing right in the top of his mouth right there. Ate it good right off the brush pile, kind of right as it was kind of falling through the branches. He was tucked up there tight. Nothing crazy, a good start. Glad to get a fish in the boat finally. Didn't take too long, probably about 15 minutes of fishing. Got our first one in the boat. Let's go ahead and release this guy and move on to the next. Bye bud. Woo! <laughs> Almost jumped back in the boat. 
Let's go ahead and rig this bad boy up. The plastic on this bait is pretty tough. It's pretty durable. It ripped just a little bit, so I just bit off the head of it to hopefully get us a little bit better hold on there. And there we go, holding like a champ. Let's get this thing pinned back in there and pull that bullet weight back down and we are ready to roll. I don't know if y'all can hear all that beeping from the fish finder, but I am not kidding y'all. When I say there's a giant ball of shad every 15 feet, I mean it. There's so much bait out here right now. It's definitely gonna make it a little bit harder for these bass to find my stuff with so much bait around, but these guys are gonna be feasting up, especially with these cooler conditions. I'm not too worried about it. I just really hope we can find some schoolers. That would be awesome. I really wanna find a nice big old ball of bass pushing a big old ball of shad up on some shallow flats. That would be, <laughs> that would be epic for today. Oh, I think we can do it. Uh, the flat I'm gonna go to next, kinda as I work, out of this area is usually really, really good for schooling fish. One of the other things I wanted to mention about the weather down here today is it is abnormally cool for June. It's really cool weather. It's probably been in like the mid to low 70s, rising into the low 80s this week down here in South Carolina. And that's just absurdly cool for June down here. So that is like one of the main reasons these fish, I think, are gonna get really, really active. There aren't those really blistering hot days recently. So these fish are gonna kind of relax a little bit and start moving around a lot and really start feeding up instead of kind of bunkering down in some deep holes when that really blistering hot summer heat comes in. So that is really good news for us today. So I'm just really just interested to kind of figure out this bite. I thought I was gonna pull some stuff off of this area right here. There's a nice little flat right here that I thought would be holding some fish. I might throw the top water across it because I'm not convinced that there isn't fish on this thing. And there's a nice drop off off the side. So it's a really good transition area for this fish to go from deep water to shallow water with a nice flat slash hump type thing going on. So let me pick up that top water real quick, see if I don't have any luck on that thrown across here. I'm on edge right now. This is the type of bait and type of spot where I have potential to just to murk a big old fatty this morning. Oh, come on, this top water just looks so good. Something come up and destroy that thing. Just waiting to be hammered. Well, looks like I was wrong about that. Time to go back to the drawing board on figuring out where these fish are. That's kind of what it's all about, guys. When you're down in the water, you never know what the fish are really gonna do. You always can have a hunch based off your knowledge, but you really kind of got to get out there and just dissect each body of water on any given day to kind of figure out what the fish are doing. So I'm gonna kind of move off to this ledge and see if they're holding that. Dang, no luck on that either. Sheesh. All right, we're gonna have to rethink our strategies today. Gonna go ahead and try some docks, see if that has any luck at all. Ooh, that one took my worm. That one took my worm. I don't think it was that big of a fish because it was like, it might've been like a little brim or something like that. But there's a good chance that was a bass, could have been. On that note, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my next crazy creature bait. And that is these little guys, Molex. I'm not familiar with the brand, never used them before, but this is what these crawls look like. Crazy looking crawl. These little appendages right here is kind of what caught my eye when I was browsing the web. These are just wild looking appendages for a crawfish style bait. I thought it was cool. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. All tied up on the Texas rig. Let's go ahead and flip this futuristic crawl and see what kind of luck we can have. There we go. There we go. Got one stuck. Got one stuck on the wall. Oh, there we go. Got him up underneath the dam wall. Let's go. That's actually super exciting for me because I never catch fish up under this thing. I fish it all the time, always thinking there's going to be something up under there, and there never is. But today, the crazy futuristic crawl prevails for me up underneath that little dock type dam deal over there. Let's go. There's better look at that fish. Absolutely crushed this thing. Smoked it right there underneath that dock. I thought I had a bigger one than this for a second just because he went right around the pillar as soon as he picked up this thing. Didn't feel the bite, I just felt it get tight and I saw that line wrap around the pole. I was like, oh boy, we're gonna be in for a ride on that one. 
when you get all tangled up on those posts, you never know what might happen. But saw a little fish, number two in the boat. Let's keep on moving. Bye, bud. Staring at me. Peace. First fish ripped right through the top of this thing, so I'm just gonna bite the tip off of it. Didn't mean to spit that plastic in the water, pick that up, put that in the boat. So I'm not littering. And it's time to rig this bad boy back up. There we go, got another one. Got another one up underneath that same spot. <laughs> Let's go, Let's go. Hopefully they're gonna be up under docks today if they're up under this thing. Let's go. So Bash, you wanna to touch them? How about that? Is that cool, guys? So cool. Whoa. <laughs> Squeeze. Now you can, look at that. Hold them up. All right, you wanna put them back in? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> on that note, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next bait. Gotta love it when the kids get super excited, especially once you've never been kind of around fishing. Always like to try to get kids involved when I can. If I see them while I'm fishing, let them hold the fish, see the fish, and just overall try to get a good appreciation for nature and hopefully maybe even pick up a fishing rod if they're not into it themselves. Definitely want as many people to enjoy this sport. It's so much fun. I have a blast doing it. I just think it's good, healthy fun. So if I see an opportunity to get kids involved, I always try to do that. We have our next bait tied up though, and this is the crazy looking isopod. Just deep sea creature looking bait. This thing looks like it's straight from 30,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. This is going to be an interesting bait to fish with. But as with like all soft plastics, I just think it's gonna get munched. I mean, obviously this isn't probably a natural forge in this body of water, but these fish, they will pretty much go after any soft plastic for the most part, as long as it's not too out there. I think this is right in line with some crawl baits. I think it looks similar enough and these fish should crush it. I'm gonna get back in that same corner. That spot's been fire for us. Oh my God. Oh my God, there was another one. There was another one, I missed it. At some point I'm gonna make some kind of tutorial for skip cast, whether it's on my Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. I might make a full dedicated video for it on YouTube at some point, but I'll probably start with like a small tutorial on Instagram slash TikTok, but it is so important guys to get that skip cast down. It's so you can get super far back, deep in areas that you normally just couldn't get with a regular cast. And that's usually where those fish are tucked tight. Both of those fish that I pulled off right there were tucked all the way against the back edge, all the way up against that dam wall where the water's flowing over the top. Oh, just missed one right there. That one was further out. But if you can't skip cast, it can be very difficult to get it back where you need it to be. So if you haven't learned to do that already, I definitely would recommend looking into how to do that. There's one, there's one. Another one up underneath that dock. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one, guys. It's the best one all day. Good fish. This one could be pushing four or five pounds. I just don't have my scale, so that sucks. Sheesh, on <laughs> the isopod bait. Oh, let's go, and I don't have my net either. That's really good. I was really prepared today, guys, as you can tell. Oh my goodness. Come up here, buster. Be hooked good, be hooked good, be hooked good. Yeah, let's go. That's a beast. Take a look at that, y'all smoke that thing up underneath that dock. As I said, you gotta get it back there, all the way up against the back. This little thing is loaded up with some fish. I was actually out here the other day. Hold on, let me turn that just a little bit. There we go. I was actually out here the other day with my girlfriend, we watched the sunrise, and we we're sitting on the other side kind of watching the water come over, and we're just seeing shad balls pour over the top of this water little dam right here going out into the marsh. So I was like, man, I gotta get back out over here during the day and try to fish up underneath this thing. I know I normally don't have luck fishing in this little spot. I fish it a lot. This is the most luck I've had by far fishing this spot, but it just looked good with all that bait running over the top. I knew there had to be some fish up under that, and I was right. This is a solid bass, probably close to five pounds if I had to guess. I wish I had my scale, but whew, that's a beast. Thanks for munching, you big, beautiful gal. Woo! <laughs> oh, it's so nice to get my hands on a big bass again. Later, buddy. 
Uh, she swims. Well, this thing got busted up on that first fish. The plastic's falling apart on the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and consider that worthless. We're gonna go ahead and grab a new one out of the package. Would have liked to get at least two fish out of one bait, but we're gonna see if this one holds up any better. Let's give it back up under there. There we go. Let there be another large marge up in there. Karen, where you at? Oh, just missed one right there. Ah, I'm out here on this point right here. This is one of the areas I thought they might be kind of posted up on. And there was one right up underneath that branch. Missed him. I don't know if I got a piece of him or not. I'm gonna put it back in there, see if I can't get that bite. Nothing, nada. That first fish I caught came off a little lay down. I'm over here at a much bigger one. It kind of goes all the way out this way. I'm gonna see if there's any fish up on that because they were up underneath the dock, which is wood. So they might be on some different kind of wood, aka lay down. We're gonna find out. Yep, yep, they're on it. Oh no, I missed it. I missed it. Ah, I set the hook in the wrong direction. Crap. Oh, I didn't even feel that one pick it up. That could have been a big one, guys. Dang, that one bit just like a Mondo. Dang, and he messed up my little bait. Some of the appendages came off and it just ripped up a lot. These baits are not that durable. If you're thinking about getting some isopods for yourself, I don't know if I'd recommend them or not, but uh, so far durability, not their best attribute. And they smell like freaking cat food or something like that. They stank. Looks more like a catfish soft plastic than a, a bass soft plastic. Let's get back in there. Oh, dang, another bite. Oh, there was one chasing it. There was one chasing it. Well, there's Noah giving me a buzz. We're going to be filming a video after this one. So make sure you stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Oh no, it snapped off. No, oh, no, I didn't snap off. Dang, he just got it. Oh, I was moving right there, just trying to come up to this lay down and just took a little quick cast in a pocket. I thought there might be a fish. And sure enough, there was one up in there. But on that note, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch baits. Gonna go ahead and move over to our next crazy one. And that is these guys right here. These weird freaking worms. They got the funniest looking tails on them. Check this out. I'm sure I already showed it to y'all. But these got these like little frog legs on the back. <laughs> just double appendage. I just thought they were so funny looking. I definitely think it's gonna get smoked, but it's just an interesting looking bait. Let's go ahead and get our Texas rigged up. There's one. <laughs> There's one on the crazy worm. <laughs> you like those frog legs. Come on here, buddy. Ooh, yes, sir. <laughs> Smoked it. Another lay down, another fish. I'm sure y'all probably couldn't see that lay down at all, but it goes like straight in from the bank, really steep off the side. And I figured I'd give it a shot. These fish have been holding up against wood today, up underneath that dock, up underneath some of these lay downs. Wherever there's timber, these fish are up against it. And that is a good little pattern we're on to. I'm still hoping that we might find some fish, some schooling fish more specifically, out on a flat that's kind of back behind that bridge over there. So we're gonna kind of work our way towards that. Great little fish. Let's move on to the next. Bye, bucko. Woo! Shoo! There's a little mini point on this point. Maybe that little shaded pocket on it. That looks good. Oh, oh, I see some, I see some bass. I see some bass, guys. There's like two or three, three pounders. Hold on. Oh, sh sh They're cruising that bank. They're cruising that bank right here on this point where I thought they would be. Hopefully that gets them. Dang. I don't know where they went. Ah, that was a nice little pot of them though. I don't know if they would have eaten this. They were probably looking for some bait balls. Here, I'm going to show you all why skipping is so important. See that little shaded pocket up underneath that tree branch? You need to get up under there. Watch, there's going to be a fish. Oh. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh, I got ticked. I got ticked. I wasn't lying, guys. There was a fish up underneath there. Holy smokes. 
was kind of hoping these legs would kind of move like independently, like kind of like back and forth in the water when it's bouncing, but they kind of just stick together and move in one fluid motion. So there might as well be just one little bigger tail with a little frog-like foot on it. Well, a fish with this crazy looking frog tail worm type of thing for a minute and I've had no more luck on it. Crazy looking bait, don't know how functional it is. I mean, I think it's mostly the color right now. I really don't wanna use red, I wanna use a darker color or a more natural color like a green or something like that. But it's time to move on to our final bait and this bait right here, I'm not gonna tell y'all really anything about it. I'm just gonna show it to y'all because I really do wanna make a dedicated video to just this bait alone because it is really Really cool it's got some interesting things about it but let's go ahead and break that bad boy out here is the bait i was talking about look how insane this thing looks i can't wait to make a video about this thing specifically but i figured it fits into this video as well so i wanted to use it here at the end so if you want to find out a little bit more about this crazy looking all kinds of appendages looking thing make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss that video probably make it very soon if not the next video itself Let's go ahead and get this thing on here and see what we can find. All rigged up on the Texas rig. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that we're about to get swamped on this thing. Let's go ahead and get it in the water and see how it performs. And of course my GoPro was not rolling when I caught a fish on that last and final bait. But fortunately, I will be making a video dedicated solely to that bait. So there will be some action with that lure in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. But hopefully y'all enjoyed today's video. And as always, Bassin is a passion. Peace out.